I think I skipped some of the fundamentals of learning game development and had a lack of understanding of the way textures work, how to create them, how to take advantage of their functionality and how to make them look badass in the games we create. To fix this feeling, I've spent a fair amount of time learning how to use them over the past few weeks and today I'll be sharing some of my learnings with you in the form of weapon trails. Hopefully you can take these and go create some awesome things, you know the saying, give a man a fish and he'll something with the fish. In this video, we'll be covering some basic experiments I did with textures, their colors, how emission works, and their relationships with particle systems. We'll look at how I went about drawing these weapon trail textures in Photoshop, how to create a sprite sheet using the texture, how to create a particle system to use the sprite sheet, and how to attach it to a character swinging a weapon around. The first thing I wanted to do was understand how we could manipulate the color of a texture by using a particle system. By the way, you can do pretty much everything I do in Photoshop using GIMP. So in Photoshop, I created a simple white texture and brought that over to Unity. I added a basic particle system which we'll use to do all our experiments against. I then went ahead and created a material and changed the shader type to a universal render pipeline particle unlit. I changed the color to something that would stand out and assigned the material to the renderer of the particle system. Now, as impressive as this is, hold on to your excitement because this has the simple limitation that when changing the color, it seems to be darker than we'd expect. Aww. We can fix this though by changing the color type in our material to color instead of whatever else it was on. This changes it from a blending mode, which would blend the selected particle color with the color of our texture, to a mode which uses the particle color independently. An interesting and useful observation here is that if we change the base color of our material to a darker one approaching the color black, the particle system colors appear darker. And if we move toward a lighter color approaching white, the particle system color appears brighter and closer to the selected color. This got me thinking that maybe we could use this to our advantage by creating gradient textures that go from a white color to a darker color. So I created this gradient texture over in Photoshop, brought it into Unity and created a material for it. I dragged the material into the particle system and as expected the color goes from a lighter color to a darker color. From here I started thinking about transparency and exploring the texture settings I found this setting that lets you use the gradient as a source for transparency. So if enabled the closer the color gets to black the more transparent it is. Whilst this is cool it's not quite what I'm looking for because I'd want the weapon trail to be transparent in specific places which you could probably achieve with this but I'm sure there's an easier way. So back in Photoshop I whipped out the eraser tool and tried to make a somewhat distinct shape and now now our texture contains a gradient effect as well as some transparent bits. After creating a material and dragging the new texture into it, nothing happens. This is because we need to change the surface type to transparent. After fixing that, we can drag our material into our particle system and we have a texture whose color is defined by the particle system and has transparency in the areas we decided on. I thought it would also be cool if we could take the darkest parts of our texture and turn them into emissive bits, parts that would glow, as weapon trails tend to do. After doing some research, I came across emission maps, so if we were to invert the color of our texture in Photoshop and then bring that back into Unity but assign the inverted texture to the emission property of the material and then select a color and give it some intensity, we get a cool glow effect. Whilst it's great that we've created a fancy Windows logo, there seems to be some interference with the emission texture and the base color. So I figured, let's not use the gradients but instead completely black out the parts of the emission texture that we don't want to glow. And after replacing the emission texture back in Unity, we have a much better separation between emission and color. Backed by this newfound understanding of how textures work, I figured I was ready to start thinking about drawing some of them. I consulted the article for some inspiration and found a few interesting reference images to use as a starting point. From them, what I gathered was that the shape that I would be aiming to create is one that resembles a banana. Back in Photoshop, we'll create an image of size 1024 by 1024. We'll then use the shape tool to draw two overlapping circles. We'll merge the two layers and then fill in this banana shaped part with some color. We'll then select the filled in part and isolate it, create a new layer from it. We'll transform it, flip it and increase its size a little bit. For this next part, I used a drawing tablet to create an outline that will form the emissive bit of the trail. Then I worked out the eraser tool which we'll use to create some transparency. And after a few iterations of this changing colors and shapes and transparency and emission, this is what I ended up with. Not bad for someone still trying to learn the art of, well, art. Next I applied a grayscale to the image and did some isolation and color flipping to get the emissive map. As tedious as this next part seems, it actually becomes pretty therapeutic after you get the hang of it. It involves breaking the image down into a frame by frame animation that will then be used to generate a sprite sheet. I duplicated the layer multiple times and deleted parts of the image in each layer in the way that would represent the trail appearing and then disappearing as the character swings their weapon. After doing this, I have 12 layers which I then need to export into a sprite sheet. 
I used a really awesome tool called Sprite Sheet Creator, which I'll link down below. The script will take each of our layers and put them into a sprite sheet of an auto-determined size. Once it's done thinking and processing, it will spit out a file like this. We'll just need to crop it, and that's our sprite sheet done. Next, we'll use some filling and inversion to create the emissive map. After bringing our textures in and creating a material from them, we'll create a particle system. We'll drag the material containing our sprite sheet textures in, enable texture sheet animation, and set the tiling to 4x3. Back in the renderer, we'll set the render mode to mesh and select quad as the mesh type. In the general properties, set the start speed to 0 and the start lifetime to something small like 0 0.4. We'll set the duration to the same. All well, things are looking good so far. We'll pick a color. I'll go with this bluish stuff. We can disable the shape module. We'll set the rate over time in the emission to zero. We'll need to enable a burst of one. At this point, we have a trail that looks like this. Not bad. As a quick recap, this is what our material settings look like right now. Surface type transparent, blending mode alpha, render face both, base and emission map set, and flipbook blending enabled. We can enable an emission color and set the intensity quite high up as well. One thing I forgot to do was to set the render alignment of our renderer to local. Nice. And looking at it in the scene view, uh, the emissive map looks a little bit wonky, but I think it serves its purpose. For the character we're going to use, I headed on over to Mixamo and found a character with a nice weapon swing animation. I brought it over to Unity and after setting up an animation controller, I brought in our particle system that we created for our weapon trail, positioned it correctly, and then simply enabled it at the correct time during the animation. I think for a first attempt, this is a pretty good result. I'll keep working at it though, getting better at my art, and I'll keep sharing the process with you guys. So if you've enjoyed this, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.